Greetings and welcome everyone to Space Week Live for Sunday, uh, October 3rd. We had a pretty eventful week last week. Last Monday, a Chinese Kuaizhou 1A rocket lifted off from its mobile launch vehicle at the Zhuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobai Desert of northwest China, bearing the Zhilin 1 Gaofen 2D optical remote sensing satellite. The satellite will be used to gather data for agriculture, forestry, resources, and environmental monitoring, and was developed by XPACE Technology Corporation. That's E-X-P-A-C-E, -E, uh, although it sounds kind of like an inversion of SpaceX, XPACE. Let's check out the launch. So uh, let's check that out again, or let's take another look in slow motion because I noticed something, uh, <clears throat> well, I thought it was odd, but it just turned out to be interesting during the launch. Okay, uh, see that brown puff coming from just below the payload fairing? That's nitrogen tetroxide, the oxidizer for the hypergolic-fueled fourth stage. Uh, it has a distinctive reddish-brown color. Uh, NTO is a liquid when kept cool, but it has a low boiling point. Watch for more puffs. Poof. Um, it has a low boiling point, just 69.98 degrees Fahrenheit, or 21.1 degrees Celsius. There's a visible puff of NTO about every two to four seconds during the launch sequence. Uh, the launch took place about 2 p.m. local time in the early afternoon. Uh, I couldn't find any historical weather data for this remote region of China, but the forecast for the next two weeks only has one day where the high temperature will be over the boiling point of nitrogen tetroxide, and only by about one degree. Uh, looking back at previous Kwaizhu 1A launches, though, there is similar NTO venting, sometimes more, sometimes less. Here's one from 2019. Poof. 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 So it seems a little bit sporadic, not... not uh, uh, like it's venting on a timer, but um, uh, it probably varies based on the ambient air temperature. The hotter the weather, the more they have to vent. I hadn't noticed this on previous launches, but I don't watch the Chinese launches too closely because I can't live stream them. So, uh, but anyway, I thought that was an interesting uh, thing to point out, the NTO venting on uh, for hypergolic stages. Then, also last Monday, uh, ULA launched an Atlas V-401 with the Landsat 9 Earth Observation Satellite for NASA and the USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, engine ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of an Atlas V rocket and Landsat 9, continuing the legacy of an irreplaceable 50-year record on our ever-changing planet. Yeah, so the first Landsat satellite was launched almost 50 years ago, and ever since then, they have been, that series have been immeasurably helpful in the fields of agriculture, urban planning, environmental and ocean monitoring, uh, phytoplankton bloom 
tracking, monitoring, and uh, tracking the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, uh, etc. Landsat has been uh, exceptionally useful. Then on Tuesday, the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft was relocated from the Rasviet module to the new Nauka science module to make way for Soyuz MS-19, which will be launching later this week. On board were cosmonauts Pyotr Dubrov and Oleg Novitsky, Novitsky as well as astronaut Mark Vandehei. Although crew spacecraft such as Soyuz and Crew Dragon are capable of autonomous docking and undocking, the crew still has to be on board because that ship is their life raft back to Earth if something goes wrong. So we had some great views of, uh, of this undocking with Earth in the background. Um, not so much uh, a couple days later on Thursday, when SpaceX Cargo Dragon CRS-23 undocked from the ISS and splashed down in the Atlantic bearing uh, research experiments. Um, the, for some reason, during that coverage, they only showed... This is played at two times speed, by the way, which is why it looks a little, little faster than, than uh, real life, because it is. Um, so for some reason during this broadcast, they only showed Crew Dragon for a short amount of time. Um, and most of the time we were just looking at Mission Control, which got lots of grumbles from the, from the live stream viewers. But, uh, yeah, say lovey. I mean, we get, we get what we get. But um, uh, now remember that Dragon is the only cargo spacecraft that can safely return to Earth from the ISS. Progress, Cygnus, and the now-retired H-2 transfer vehicle, they all burn up on re-entry. Also on Thursday, NASA conducted an eight-and-a-half-minute hot-fire test of one of its RS-25E developmental test engines at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. These are the cheaper, expendable engines being developed for the SLS rocket, after the remaining RS-25D legacy space shuttle main engines are used up. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but uh, it's always it's always cool to watch the RS-25 uh, uh, spring to life. It's a beautiful engine, um, uh, hydrogen fueled, so it burns nice and clean, uh, emitting uh, water vapor as its exhaust. All right, and that oh yes, um, on Thursday. Uh, nope, that was Thursday. Uh, yes, also on Thursday, a Japanese Epsilon rocket was supposed to launch. Uh, oh my. A Japanese Epsilon rocket was supposed to launch last Thursday with the Rapid Innovative Payload Demonstration Satellite 2, uh, but the launch was scrubbed at the last minute. And I, I do not have specific knowledge of <clears throat> what happened there, but, um, but they did scrub the launch and, uh, uh, you know, two days later, JAXA has not, to my knowledge, announced when they're going to try again. So, i um, not sure what's going on with Epsilon, but uh, uh, stay tuned for the uh, next attempt at an Epsilon launch. Looking ahead to this week, there is just one launch on the schedule, but it is a noteworthy one. On Tuesday, October 5th at 4.55 a.m. Eastern, 0855 GMT, a Soyuz, I'm sorry, Soyuz MS-19 lifts off from Baikonur Cosmodrome with cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov, film director Klim Shipenko, and actress Yulia Parasild. For the first time ever, portions of an actual feature film movie will be filmed in space. The film is called Vuizov, if I have that pronunciation right, which means the challenge. 
According to IMDb, it follows a female surgeon who has to perform an operation on a cosmonaut too ill to return to Earth immediately. Parasild plays the surgeon, of course, and director Shipenko will play the sick cosmonaut. So, actor-director doing uh, wearing multiple hats, as it were. Uh, Shipenko and Parasild will stay on the ISS for about a week, returning to Earth on Soyuz MS-18. Uh, Shkaplerov will remain on station for the duration of his six-month expedition mission. Then, uh, so that is the launch. The docking coverage will begin at 7.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, just a couple hours later, four, five, six, seven, like two and a half hours after launch. And hatch opening coverage starts at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, 13.30 GMT. I'm, go I'm going to lump the docking and hatch opening coverage together into one stream because they're, they're close together, but... Uh, but the uh, launch will be on a separate stream. All right. So uh, some of you may have heard that Tom Cruise has plans to film a movie in space, but uh, apparently the Russians beat him to it <laughs> in the new commercial space race. Uh, there is also a new moon on October 6th, uh, Thursday, peaking at 6.05 a.m. Eastern, 10.05 GMT. So if you have clear skies, that'll be a good night for stargazing. I'd like to take a moment to thank and welcome new channel members, Charles Pelton and M2M, who both joined channel membership this week. Uh, now getting to your questions. Let's see what you got. Let's see. Uh, MVM Motovlog Music. Isn't X Space working on reusing their first first stage? Um, there is a uh, I, I have heard of a Chinese rocket manufacturer who was working on a reusable first stage. Off the top of my head, I don't recall if it was X Space uh, or not, but uh, possibly. Uh, now, Kwaju launches from a vehicle. Kwaju 1A launches from the back of a of a of a transport vehicle, kind of like the the old iconic, uh, you know, Russian ICBMs <laughs> um, on trucks. But uh, uh, so I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure if there are any plans for Kwaju to be reusable. But uh, uh, all right, Iwo Wazanuski. Uh, is this solid or liquid fueled? Probably, I believe he was referring to the Kwaju 1A. So the first three stages of Kwaju 1A are solid fueled, and the fourth stage is liquid fueled. Um, now, interestingly, on on the um, couple of websites I looked at, the uh, Gunter's Space page and the Wikipedia article on the Kwaju 1A, they only mentioned that it is a liquid fueled fourth stage. They don't mention what kind of liquid. However, based on our observations of the launch, uh, it's cl it's clear that it's it's hypergolic uh, uh, nitrogen tetroxide and and uh, you know presumably hydrazine uh, uh, fuels because nothing else produces that distinctive uh, red puff of cloud. Um, now the hydrazine is actually a clear liquid, but uh, it's the nitrogen tetroxide that that's the reddish brown color. Solid motor has no steering. Um, oh, this is from Roger C. Um, so solid rocket, solid propelled rockets or boosters, uh, they can have thrust vectoring, so they can they can direct their thrust in order to uh, um, achieve you know steering, which they do. I mean, in um, the clip of the. Uh, of the 2019 Kwaju 1A launch that I showed you briefly earlier, uh, you can see that there's a pretty aggressive pitch over maneuver uh, um, shortly after launch. So they can they they can steer a solid propelled rocket. Uh, they just can't turn it off. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least uh, not easily, uh, because once once that candle is lit, it it it's a it's it's going to burn all the way to uh, to completion. 
Uh, Mark Desaire, as far as I know, most or all solid rocket engines boosters are only used in first stages. Uh, he's asking me. Steering can be done by much sm smaller engines. So, yeah, again, um, you can use thrust vectoring to steer a solid propelled rocket. I mean, Vega is also solid propelled uh, f from Ariane Space. And, um, and I mean, they, you know, uh, are able to to steer that rocket as as needed. So then uh, they also can use RCS thrusters to uh, uh, you know to steer the rocket on ascent. But uh, Daniel C. Star, <laughs> Jimbo wants to buy that hat. Well, this particular hat actually came from the uh, the gift shop at the Saturn V exhibit at Kennedy Space Center uh, a few years ago. Uh, what? Three, three years ago, two years ago. Um, so I can't, I can't resell SpaceX merch, but you can, you can get this from either SpaceX or, uh, or uh, the NASA shop. Uh, Snow kittens, I space and One space are on the reusable spectrum and quite along of the Chinese startups. Okay, so I space and One space. Uh, are uh, reusable rocket companies to look out for. Um, person with a Russian name that I uh, can't easily pronounce. Will Ross Space broadcast the launch of our rocket? Does anybody know? Um, if you mean the Soyuz 2.1A that will be launching Soyuz MS-19, yes, I'll absolutely be uh, live streaming that. Both the launch <clears throat> and the rendezvous docking and hatch opening. Uh, if there's another Russian rocket that uh, <clears throat> that is going up that somehow escaped the keen eyes of all of the uh, launch schedule websites, then uh, I'm, I'm not aware of it. <laughs> but, um, all right. Uh, going back to the live chat. Do, do, do. Okay, so looks like that's it. That's all the questions we have for this week. Thank you all for coming, as always. And um, I hope to see you in the next live stream. And if not, take care, keep it raw, and I'll see you later. <laughs>